Okay, so let's take a look at the two main types of graphs we can make if we have categorical data. Now these are by, two, by no means the only two types of graphs you can make. They're just some of the most common types of graphs you can make for categorical data. And I would imagine you've seen some of these before. Most of you have seen a pie chart at some point in your life, and you've also seen a bar chart at some point in your life. Bar charts are the vocab term that we use when you have categorical data. In the previous example, we made something called a histogram, which is the vocab term you use when you have numerical data. So bar charts and histograms look, look practically the same. Bar charts just have categorical data on the x-axis, and histograms have numerical data on the x-axis. And typically, in, in bar charts, between the categories that are aligning your x-axis, there's usually space between the bars. And in a histogram, there aren't any spaces between the, the bars, the rectangles, unless there's a gap in your data. Now, for pie charts, we're just going to look at your standard pie chart. For bar charts, we're going to look at three versions. We're going to look at the regular bar chart, the one that looks most like a histogram. We're going to look at a comparative bar chart, and we're going to look at segmented bar charts. So let's take a look at example seven. So below are tables for part-time versus full-time students at De Anza College in Cupertino, Chabot College here in Hayward, and Skyline College over in San Bruno. And these are some of the colleges that I've worked at in the past. So the table displays the frequencies, all right? So the actual counts, the frequencies, and the percentages, the relative frequencies. So if you take a look just at these three different tables I've provided you. Here's the De Anza numbers, here's our Chabot numbers, and here's the Skyline numbers. So if we look at the frequencies, we see 9,200, 13,296. For a total, De Anza got a total of 22,496 students. And I believe this data is current as of one year ago. I don't think I updated it between last year and this year. So they have about 41%, or really 40.9% full-time, versus 59.1% part-time. And just to review that idea that we talked about in the previous example, if I ever wanna go from a frequency to a relative frequency, let me clear this out, what is it I need to divide by? Sample size. So I would take 9,200 and I would divide that by 22,496 and there you see it, 40.9%. I rounded off at the thousandths place. All right, if I wanted to take a look at this, we've got 13,296. I'm still gonna divide that by the sample size. And this problem isn't asking you to do that. I just want to see, I want you to see where I get those numbers from. All right, so let me turn that off. So we've got De Anza's numbers, right? Frequencies, relative frequencies, whole numbers, proportions, percentages, ratios, fractions, if you wanna turn them into fractions. Here we've got Chabot's, frequencies and relative frequencies, and then we got Skyline's frequencies and relative frequencies. Things to take note of, these two frequencies should add up to the sample size, or in this case, the population size. This isn't a sample, this is the entire population. You notice these relative frequencies add up to 100%. That's consistent with the example six and how we added up those two column totals. Right, here's our population. Our relative frequencies are adding up to 100%. Here's our population. Our relative frequencies are adding up to 100%. So if you were to look just at the three tables, we're not looking at any of the, the graphs below, just looking at the three tables, if I want to create sentences in terms of comparing and contrasting De Anza, Chabot, and Skyline, if I wanted to compare the three colleges, what's something that I notice that's common between all three? Something I'm noticing is common between all three is that each college has quite a larger, or the percent of part-timers at that school is quite larger than the percent of full-timers. So if I wanted to write that as a sentence, I could say there is a greater percentage of part-time students at the three colleges.
And again, this problem wasn't asking us to do this. I just want us to start to get into the habit of writing sentences. I think that's something a lot of us struggle with, so we want to practice it so we get better at it. So there's a greater percentage of part-time students at all three colleges. That's something they have in common. If I wanted to look for something where they were different, one thing that stood out to me while looking at this data, when I look at De Anza versus Chabot versus Skyline, was just how many students go to De Anza. And if you've ever been over to that school, it's huge. So if I wanted to contrast the three colleges, I would say there are a larger number of students at De Anza when compared to the other two colleges. So they're just practicing writing up two sentences, just because. All right, so if we move this up a little, the first graphs we're looking at are our pie charts. And this is just a very typical graph that we make pie charts. So I color coded these over here at De Anza. Uh, you can't quite tell because when I print this out, this is on black and white, but I, if you look at the, the online versions of these, they have the school colors. Um, that are breaking these these pies out. So here you can see just a graphic representation. The piece of the pie that represents part-timers is overwhelming compared to full-timers. Way more part-timers than full-timers. Way more part-timers than full-timers. And you can see over here at Chabot, we have the largest relative frequency of part-timers, right? We have 69% as compared to 67 and 59. Yeah, and even though our part-time number, right? If we look at our frequency, our frequency is actually less than De Anza, but our relative frequency is higher. And again, that goes back to just De Anza has so many students at uh, going to that school. And that's a reason that you want to look at relative frequencies as compared to frequencies. So for me, I, when I look at graphs that have comparative numbers in them, I'm always looking for some kind of ratio. I want a, a percentage, a proportion, a relative frequency, so I, I know I have a better context of what I'm looking at. I'll give you a, an example. Um, when I worked at Skyline College, my salary is a lot higher than it is at Chabot, and I'm not knocking Chabot. I'm going to get to why Chabot is actually better. So yes, I made more when I was at Skyline, but if you look at the relative frequency, if you look at the ratio of what I made at Skyline to the cost of living in San Francisco, and you compare that in a ratio of what I make at Chabot College in ratio or in comparison to the cost of living in Hayward, you can see that my dollar goes a lot farther if I'm working at Chabot than it did at Skyline. So while my salary was higher at Skyline than Chabot, it really didn't matter because if I looked at, at the relative frequency or the ratio between salary and cost of living, Hayward and Chabot was winning out. So like I said, I always like to look at relative frequencies instead of frequencies. I think it's a more honest statistic. So if we take a look and scooch down a little further, we're gonna get to our comparative bar charts. Okay? And the question that I'm asking of, of you is which comparative bar chart is appropriate? They're both correct, but one of them is a better comparative bar chart. It's more appropriate. So let's take a look at what's going on down here. So first of all, I see my subcategories down here on my x-axis. Um, I, I would hope that there would be some kind of variable down here on the x-axis. So I would want to say something like student status. So when it comes to all of the graphs that we'll make in this class, well, with the exception of a couple, but most of them, your variable is on the x-axis, and either frequency or relative frequency is on the y-axis. So you can see here, my frequencies are over on this first graph. They're going from 0 to 14,000, because the highest frequency I had came from the part-timers over at De Anza at 13,296. The smallest frequency count I had was the full-timers over at Skyline. 
So you can see in this graph, De Anza has got the highest frequency counts of all of them. Okay, and, and again, it's hard to kind of tell the different um, colorings here. If, if you look at the original graph, um, these are a little bit more clear. When I say the original graph, I mean up on Canvas, the, the PDF version, it preserves all the different color combinations I did. Um, over here, you can see that our relative frequencies are going from 0% up to 70%, or the decimal 0 to 0 0.7, because the lowest relative frequency that I had was the full timers over at Chabot, all right? and the highest relative frequency I had was the part timers over at Chabot. And I changed these decimals just a bit. Well, first off, I changed them into decimals, but I didn't go three decimal places, I only, I went two, I rounded a little bit. So in terms of which comparative bar chart is appropriate, when it comes to comparing, do you wanna compare frequencies or do you wanna compare relative frequencies? Well, if you take a look at these two, all right, if I, I the big difference here is what's going on over at Deans. Over on this left graph, you see Deans is just king of the hill on both fronts. And you see Deans is not quite king of the hill on both fronts here. It's definitely got the highest relative frequency in terms of the full timers, but it is not the highest in terms of the part timers. And over on this graph, it does look like it's the highest. But keep in mind, Deans has just a ton of students. So no matter what the breakdown, full versus part-time on, on a frequency graph, it's always gonna come out looking the highest. And a relative frequency graph is again, a more honest graph. It's more appropriate. And how you can discern, do I use a frequency or do I use a relative frequency? The rule of thumb is you should always use relative frequency unless the sample sizes, or in this case, the population sizes are exactly the same. And we were not dealing with equal population sizes. Deanza was so much larger than the other two that it's not fair to compare frequencies of Deanza to frequencies of Chabot and Skyline. We can only compare relative frequencies. So let me go ahead and write that down. So we must use relative frequencies along the y-axis because the sample sizes differ between the three colleges. Okay, so anytime you have different sample sizes, you're gonna wanna use relative frequencies. You need some kind of comparative statistic. All right, so 41%, 31%, 33%, I can compare those. These are just on different scales. 9,200, 40, 465, 34, 13, these are just on different scales, and I can't compare those two, those three, in this case, numbers.